Evening folks and welcome back for another video. Uh, in the words of Monty Python, and now for something completely different. So what we have in front of it, us here tonight are some jet engine starters and what I plan to do is to go through uh, how some of these work. One of the questions I get asked quite a lot is how a jet engine actually manages to start up. Well, so what we'll do is uh, I'll take you through some of these start various starters and uh, we can um, <clears throat> have a look at what the differences are in some of these and hopefully you should have a good idea as, as to um, basically how uh, a jet engine uh, starts and there's different types of uh, jet engines and different and obviously some start uh, with different uh, types of starter uh, but um, there are but essentially there's um, well two main sorts uh, electric and pneumatic and uh, Hopefully we've got some examples to show you. Right, without going into too much detail and getting overly involved, the whole idea of a uh, starter motor on an engine like any other engine uh, is basically to try and uh, spool the engine up or crank the engine over so that the combustion process can start and then self-sustain. And with a uh, a turbine engine or a jet engine, that's basically more or less the object of the exercise. Now, um, there's different types of starters. We've got one uh, starter motor here, and I've got a couple of others here. And uh, two of these starter motors are what they call pneumatic starter motors. So, um, <clears throat> in, in larger jet engines, in order to sort of crank the engine up, or spool it up to a speed where you can actually uh, start it or, or let the fuel in and get a light off. You've obviously got to spool the rotating assembly up to, to, to a reasonable speed, usually about several thousand RPM, um, in order so that you can crank it up without having a, a hot start. And as mentioned, there's two types. There's a pneumatic starter, which basically uses compressed air to spool up a little turbine wheel and through a gearbox which is connected into the engine. Or well, the other option is to use a conventional electric starter. Now, generally, the electric starter motors are used sort of for uh, smaller jet engines. You know, obviously, if you've got a massive great engine, like, for instance, the RB211, which we used to run a few years back, um, you're never going to crank that up with a electric starter. Um, you're going to need a, a pneumatic starter because they generally are um, much bigger and able to crank up um, bigger engines. So, <clears throat> what we've got here is a, is, is a selection of, of different types of uh, pneumatic starters. We've got a couple of different types. And uh, what we'll do is we'll try and uh, show you uh, the principles of each one. So what we've got here is a, um, <clears throat> this is basically a conventional electric starter motor. Um, <clears throat> I'm not actually sure which this came on, I don't, I'm not 100% sure whether it was actually from a turbine engine or whether it was from a, uh, um, <clears throat> a piston engine. It is an aircraft starter motor. Um, and as you can see, it's not much different from something that you'd find on a car. Uh, so something like this, um, it's very, very similar and this would connect onto the gearbox and you'd have some sort of clutch mechanism so that uh, as the turbine reached its ignition speed uh, the clutch mechanism would disengage the starter and usually the clutches on these are what they call sprag clutches uh, so they they sort of they bind um, <clears> or <throat> they disengage at a certain you know at a certain speed uh, and that's sort of quite a conventional um, way of doing things and this thing would essentially bolt into the uh, accessory gearbox and something like this it's quite heavy um, would be used in something like a Viper or something like that and um, most of them run off 24 volts take quite a bit of current uh, you generally have to use a soft start with something like this otherwise the torque generated from the initial uh, cranking can actually uh, snap some of these 
uh, drive shaft, so you have to be quite careful. So that's why we generally use uh, some sort of soft starting mechanism when we're using electric starter motors. Um, but other than that, there's not much difference. And as I said, small engines generally use you know electric uh, starter motors. So this here is a very conventional looking uh, pneumatic starter and this actually came from, um, it's actually from a Rolls Royce Spey engine, let's just get in the picture a bit, that's better. Um, as I mentioned it's from a Rolls Royce Spey, but I'm going to use this because I do have a Rolls Royce Spey engine which I'm planning to get up and running. And the way these work is that you get compressed air coming through here from your auxiliary power unit or <clears throat> external source of, of uh, compressed air. And sometimes if you've ever seen um, at the airport those uh, sort of funny looking carts, uh, those are often um, air, start, air start units which are, are actually gas turbine engines in their own right. And <clears throat> you, you'd basically connect a large hose, a large ball hose to the aircraft and there's various ducting which would bring the uh, air into the um, air starter. And so you've got a spline shaft here which then essentially bolts onto the gearbox and you've got a electrical connector there. I'm not entirely sure what that one does actually. Um, not entirely sure on this particular starter. Um, most of them don't usually have something like this. There's usually a separate um, valve or something to deliver the air, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. And what happens, if you look on this, this side here, we've got this area here where all the waste air would come out. And these things are no more than the, it's basically this a turbine wheel inside there and it just the compressed air spins this up and then in this section here you've got a little um, little gearbox um, you do have to fill it with oil it says there <clears throat> prime to oil level plug which is there and uh, away you go so that's what a conventional pneumatic starter looks like just to Show you one piece of kit which is often seen with these, and that's the. This is actually a, uh, a starter cut-off valve, and this here was, again it's from Rolls Royce Spey. So what you got here is a electrically operated, uh, new, uh, well, electrically initiated, I should say, but pneumatically operated uh, valve. So from one end, I think it would probably from this end, this side here, you'd have your compressed air coming in, or from that side, I can't remember which, and uh, on the pilot's cockpit display or uh, instrument panel, there'll be a switch there to sort of allow start air to come in from the auxiliary power unit. And this valve would then open and then provide compressed air through here, I can't remember which side it is, I, I guess it's probably from this, it goes from this way to that way, but I don't know, but for the sake of this demonstration it doesn't really, really matter too much. And this then would open and you get a big stream of compressed air which would spin up the um, uh, uh, pneumatic starter. And that's all it is really, you know, the uh, there's not much to it really, to these, these pneumatic starters, they're really just uh, turbines in reverse. Um, <clears throat> and all they've got to do is spin the engine up to a certain speed, get, get, it, get the rotating assembly up to uh, a speed where you can get a successful light off, and then they're simply shut off. Uh, and that's it. And once the engine is self-sustaining, uh, nothing more needs to be done. Until you cut the fuel off, obviously. So, the, those, so that's a, a sort of bog standard 
pneumatic starter. What I'm going to show you next is actually something a little bit different. Right, so this pneumatic starter is actually something of a beast, as we would say. Same sort of principle, compressed air in here and out through there somewhere, or actually here and here, so here and here. And as you can see with this, it's got this huge reservoir thing, and I didn't know what this was at first, and then with a bit of research I found out. So this thing, I believe, is probably from a KC-135 uh, uh, fuel tanker, which <clears throat> originally was based on the 707. So it's got some fairly big engines on it. And I, it was quite a funny story behind this, because I actually wanted a, a starter for the Viper. Uh, this is going back a few years, the 535, which actually uses a starter generator, and I couldn't find a starter. So I ended up going on eBay, and I thought, well, why don't I try using a pneumatic starter? And I saw this place in the States which was selling these, and I, well, it had what had this particular one, and, I, and from the picture, it actually didn't look too bad size-wise. But when it eventually arrived, it, ra it came in an absolutely massive box. I thought to myself, there's no way this is going to fit on the gearbox of a Viper. So I've kept it all these years, not knowing what to do with it. And um, I've sort of come up with a cunning plan, which I'll tell you about later. So anyway, just to go through it. So this is an interesting uh, pneumatic starter because this cylinder at the back here is actually a for a cartridge. So this basically combines a cartridge start uh, in addition to the conventional pneumatic air start. So for instance, if this plane wanted to get off the ground really quickly, you put a cartridge in here, and I'll open it up in a minute, I'm not sure if I can... Oh, there we go. So it, this part comes off like that. As you can see, it's just a hollow cylinder. And if we look at what's inside it, you can see it's fairly blackened and horrible. So you would put, put a massive great uh, explosive charge in there and then through this pin here this would release some sort of voltage or current set the thing off and then you get all these gases coming out of here through this pipe and then spinning up the turbine wheel which is in here, so they sort of come through here and eventually end up here and exit out here. And that would have would mean that you could spool up a jet engine in in, in well in a matter of seconds really. Uh, so it's quite an unusual way to start an engine. I mean the it was done fairly conventionally during the 60s. They used to use what's called a Kaufman starter which had several smaller cartridges and was used on things like the uh, the Buccaneer, for instance, the Royal Air Force uh, uh, fighter bomber, and uh, and a few other planes. But um, it uh, you know it's not something you see that often, and certainly I've never seen a starter this big. This is a really big one. Even even uh, the RB211 starter was actually um, slightly smaller than this. And again, you can see here it's got a output shaft which I can just about turn. And that's the clutch mechanism, it's all built inside here. Now what I would like to do with this, it's a shame just to see it sitting here idle. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to connect up an air start unit to this. I've got a, an engine that might be up to the job and it'd be quite nice to see what happens when we put some air through this. Now the, the guys in the know always say you shouldn't run these off load but who cares, let's give it a go anyway. I mean, if, it, if we trash it, um, well, it's not going to be used anymore so it should be interesting. But I doubt the engine I've got, which is a Rover, which was used on the Nimrod, powering up the spay. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's, it's going to be man enough to uh, to trash this starter. But what we can do is we can certainly connect it up to the uh, to the hose, 
the O's, which is down there, and uh, connect that up to an engine and see if we can spool this starter up for a bit of fun. <laughs> 